Why did my security software not detect a virus on my PC? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com where we've been talking about and fighting viruses and other forms of malware since 2003. Here's today's question. Why would an exploit not be caught or detected by my antivirus program? If not detectable, how much damage can the exploit actually do if users follow prudent operating precautions? Would System Restore be useful if infected? I also followed your advice and routinely image my Dell laptop. We do need to clear up a little bit of terminology, but your question's a really good place to start. If you've got security software on your system, how does malware make it through? Well, it does, or I should say it can. Let's define some terms and I'm gonna use what I came up with as my silliest metaphor ever. And then we'll talk about what you need to do. So vulnerabilities are kind of like a hole in a bathroom wall. Somebody could peek in, but as long as nobody's looking through it, there's no damage done. There's a hole. And if nobody knows it's there, nobody's looking, then there's no problem, right? Naturally, you'd like to have the hole fixed if you know about it, but as long as there's nobody looking through, it doesn't really matter, kind of, does it? An exploit is like somebody finding that hole and looking into your bathroom. In fact, if the hole is big enough, they can do things like, I don't know, steal your toothbrush, uh, turn your toilet paper upside down to whatever the orientation is you happen to like. Uh, they can flush your toilet when you're not looking. I mean, all sorts of weird things could happen in your bathroom depending on the size of the hole in your wall. A software exploit can do things like look at the information on your computer or steal personal things like your passwords or use your computer to send spam when you're not looking. And yes, I just compared spam to whatever it is you flush down your toilet. Now, anti-malware tools. The term anti-malware really means two, I'll call them separate kind of things that we've lumped together. To return to our metaphor, anti-spyware tools, they're kind of like mall security cops. They don't know about the holes, but they do have a list of all the other places you could be spied on from. They run around and monitor the doors and the windows and make sure nobody's installed a video camera in the medicine cabinet. As soon as they see suspicious activity in those areas, they act, they do something. Antivirus tools are more like security cops that have a book of mugshots. In other words, they have a list of people that they're always on the lookout for. And if they find one of those people, if they see one of those people anywhere near your house, they act. Now, the good news is that they can identify those people. The bad news is that these guys can really only identify those people. If they're not in the book, well, that's an undiscovered virus, right? That's a virus that may exist, but hasn't yet been placed in the book. The problem, of course, is that the cops are really only as good as the information that they carry. If the anti-spyware cop doesn't know that there's a new camera been surreptitiously hidden in your teddy bear, he won't look for it. He only looks in the places he knows to look for. If the antivirus cop doesn't have a picture of the peeping Tom that was caught earlier in the day elsewhere in your neighborhood, he won't know to look for that particular person. So they are imperfect. They're good, they catch a lot, but they're imperfect. And they are only as good as the data they have. So if we come back to the real world, this is why people like me so regularly insist that you keep your security software up to date and that you keep the databases being used by the security software 
as up to date as possible. The good news, of course, is that most security software tries to do exactly that automatically. You don't necessarily have to think about it, but that's why this update is so incredibly important to your security. And it's one of the ways that malware makes it onto your machine. So finding holes, unlike a bathroom wall, the vulnerabilities or holes in software are not really all that easy or obvious to discover. It's not uncommon for a vulnerability or hole to be in software for years before someone stumbles across it or finds it somewhere. To continue that, that analogy a little further, the holes in your wall are very difficult to find. Depending on the quality of your building, there may be easier to find holes, which are usually found first, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some more difficult to find holes that haven't yet been found. Here's the scary part. Hackers are like people who spend day and night examining your wall for holes. And once they find them, they get in. Sometimes hackers will just find new ways to do more with the holes that are already known about in your wall. Sometimes they'll be able to make the hole a little bit bigger and reach in a little bit further. Either way, as soon as the hackers are successful at discovering a vulnerability, a hole in your wall, they then create malware which exploits that hole to gain access to whatever it is that particular hole lets them see, reach, or flush. So just fix the holes, I hear you saying. Of course, that's the goal. That's one of the reasons we want you to keep everything so up to date. The problem is, as I mentioned above, finding holes can be really, really hard. Think of it as a pinhole, a little tiny pinhole down near the floor, behind your toilet, a place you never, ever look. And yet, if it's found by someone and they can make it a little bit bigger, maybe they can reach in and flush your toilet. It's that level of detail. You're not looking at your wall for pinholes. But if they're there, well, those kind of bugs in software can sometimes be turned into exploits. Some holes are easier to fix than others. Some holes are worse than others. A hole that lets someone say, see the backside of your door is not quite as serious as a hole that lets somebody reach in and steal your toothbrush. Same thing is true for software. Not all bugs are the same. Not all exploits have the same ramification. And here's another one. Sometimes fixing a hole in the wall can create more holes. You can damage the wall. That's one of the reasons that bugs aren't sometimes fixed is because the process of fixing a bug, patching the wall, is so difficult that there is a high likelihood that they could create a bigger hole that might actually be more serious somewhere else in the wall. So how do you avoid holes? Well, it's stuff you already know, right? How do you avoid malware? You keep your computer software up to date. You keep the holes that are known patched. You keep your anti-malware tools up to date. Keep their databases up to date. This keeps your security cops sharp and on top of things. In some cases, you uninstall software that is known to have issues. This keeps you from doing things that perhaps a known peeping Tom could see you do. And of course, don't invite a crowd of peeping Toms into your computer by opening attachments and clicking on random links. You're just asking for somebody to start poking more holes in your wall. So one of the questions you asked was, what can malware do? Anything it wants. We're kind of breaking out of the metaphor here, other than to say, you know, once there's a hole in your wall, 
it could be the Kool-Aid guy coming through, breaking down the entire wall and doing anything that he wants in your bathroom. The short answer is once malware is on your machine, it's not your machine anymore. Malware can do anything that it wants to if it successfully makes its way onto your machine. The other question you asked was, will System Restore help? Best I can say is maybe, but probably not. My experience over now many years with System Restore is that it is unreliable in that it doesn't restore your system. It's misnamed. It only restores a few key components of your system. And turns out it's not always available when you want it. Uh, that makes it less than what I would consider to be a reliable safety net. However, I know exactly what the reliable safety net is. And so do you. It's something I've also been talking about for years. Backup. System image backups are like making a copy of your bathroom every night so that in case there's a, uh, an exploit that pokes a bigger hole in your wall, you replace your bathroom. I realize we're stretching the metaphor here, but the idea is that every day, by taking a system image backup or an incremental backup or having some kind of a backup strategy in place, if you find there's a problem, if you find malware running loose on your machine, if somebody pokes a hole in the wall, you can fix it yourself by restoring your machine to a backup that was taken prior to the hole being punched. It's that simple, at least in concept. I realize backups are their own topic. I talk about them a lot. Search the site. You'll find a lot of articles and videos on the topic. But the bottom line is the best way to protect yourself is with a regular full backup. I hope this was helpful. I hope we didn't stretch the metaphor too far. Uh, for the full article on which this video was based, for any updates, for related links and more comments, etc., visit askleo.com slash 6276. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.